don't we treat everybody right? Yeah. Sunday morning. God bless you, keep you, protect you. May his grace and mercy run you down and overtake you. I want him to climb all up in your afro and all up in your plaits and all up in your dreads. May God just bless us as only he can in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's a blessing right there. What yeah. a blessing. So I, I was thinking about that song of staying on the battlefield and treat everybody right. You know, that, that's a declaration. If you think about it, that, that's a declaration. Now, I, I will say, I will tell you that that does not come with ease. It, it ain't, it ain't, it's not always easy to treat everybody right. It's not always easy to to stay on the battlefield. Some things, sometimes things happen in our lives. But are you gonna, are you gonna follow God regardless? Are, are you gonna, are you gonna follow Him through thick and thin? Are you gonna, are you gonna follow Him? You know, when things seems at their worst. Just because we're Christians, don't mean that things are gonna be hunky dory all the time. Things happen. We're people. Things happen. You know, we have issues and problems, but but God. But there's a God that sits high and looks low. There's a God that knows all about our problems. There's a God that's, that's a doctor in the sick room. Mm. A lawyer when you need it. So young people, you probably you hadn't experienced many things. But just wait. Just wait. But just know that you're covered right now. Know that you're covered. So I was supposed to be reading the scripture. That's what I was supposed to be doing. But I just, I just had to say that. God is good. God is good and worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. We owe him that. And we ought to give him what we owe him to tell you the truth. So you are you will find this morning's scripture reading in uh, 1 Corinthians, the uh, first chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. And it reads as follows. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Why is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Mm. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God that by the foolishness of preaching, to them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Yeah. Yeah. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greek foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, 
Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Woo! That's powerful scripture. Man, if you just think about that, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. To his weakness. Right. You know, when you when you can't pick up 15 pounds, you know, when you can't bench 15 pounds, it's stronger than me. Wow. His weakness. So, so you heard the scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 18, 1st chapter 18 through 20, 25th verses. May, may God add a blessing to the hearing, will, hearing of his word. And may God bless his people. Amen. Once again, we stand in awe in your house of worship, Father God. Oh, Father God, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus the Christ, who are the high priest of the priesthood. Father God, this morning early, you woke us up this morning, and you started us on a new journey of life. We woke up in our right frame of mind once again. We were able to put our own clothes on without anyone helping us. Father God, that right there is a blessing within a blessing. Father God, we ask that your Holy Spirit fall down on our mind, body, and soul like rain, that we may comprehend the word that be preached out of the preacher's mouth and out of the teacher's mouth, Father God. Father God, we thank you this morning for that lesson we had in Sunday school. Oh, Father God, it ain't nobody but you. We get all the praise, honor, and the glory. Father God, we, we still stand in awe today, Lord, because of who you are in our life. Father God, right now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask you to move in our life. Yeah. And we walk through this city of past Christian, God poor, wherever we go, Father God, yeah. we want people to know that you are our shepherd yeah. and you are our leader. Father God, there is no greater love that a man has laid down his life like you allowed your son to do, Jehovah. Father God, we ask you to bless the choir that's going to sing, Father God, your Zion song, not their song, but your song. So in the name of Jesus, Father God, let the inner ear hear what the Spirit has to say to your people. Father God, we know we all now say that sin among us, Lord God. But we lift up the lost and the sinful people, Lord God. We lift up the leadership of this side of the United States. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus now, we need you each and every day. So in the name of Jesus, at this time, Father God, we give you your daughter's son, Jesus, as he left that comforter, that name is the Holy Spirit, to lead and guide us. So on this day, Father God, on this Sunday afternoon, we give you and your Father all praise, honor, and glory, and we magnify you. Now, as we go into this service, Lord God, let your spirit rain like rain upon us, and we glorify you, not looking at the pastor, but looking beyond the pastor to the hill that come our help. So in the name of Jesus, bless the sick to shed in, bless the bereaved family, and we lie our sister to the grave yesterday. But she's all right. She's just asleep. Now, Father God, let us get ready, get ready for your return for the church. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus now, we give you praise, honor, and the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now we turn it back over. I'd like to thank y'all. This is the end of our devotion, but it's not the end of the Lord's service. So as we join in together as a family, we want everybody to join in and song. And when the pastor brings it, the message, we want you to just let the Lord lead you. Thank you.
not make it this far Through the valleys and over the hills I know it had to be God How did I make it through the storm? How did I make it through the rain? If you really want to know just how I got here It's so easy to explain It was God's grace God's grace God's grace God's grace God's grace God's grace His amazing grace God's grace Oh, I made it I made it this far By the grace By the grace of God Oh, it was God's grace How you brought me through the night Lord, you kept me And you never left me You stood right by my side There were so many times When I came so close To old man death Tried to take me in So the reason I'm here The reason I'm here It's not hard for me to see It was God's grace God's grace God's grace God's grace God's grace God's grace His amazing grace God's grace Oh, I made it I made it this far By the grace By the grace of God It was God's grace God's grace God's grace by his grace and his mercy that we are here today. Amen. We will have our quarterly business meeting on Saturday, November the 12th at 10 o'clock a.m. We're asking all ministries, chairpersons to be present or to send a representative. Amen. We have some more surveys available for anyone that would like to participate in this Mississippi State Health Department um, survey. If you were not able to fill out one on last Sunday and you're willing to fill out one on this Sunday, we ask that you raise your hand so an usher can get you one and we can get it filled out and mailed back to the State Health Department. The youth department will host a fall a wing following Christ next Sunday, October the 30th at 3 o'clock p.m. We are seeking volunteers to help set up, chaperone, and clean up. We are also in need of volunteers to set up their cars for trunk or treat. If you are able to assist, please let Sister Ashley know. 
Also, in coordination with the following, the children will be, will be preparing baked goods. Any children who would like to help are asked to be at the church on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. The youth department is also participating in Operation Christmas Child. We will be preparing shoe boxes of items to send to children in another country. Items that are needed or toys, small, that's a small toy, personal items, school supplies, and accessory items. We are asking each child from the youth department and any of you that would like to join us to start bringing items on next Sunday. We will collect these items through Wednesday, November the 9th. We want to keep our bereaved families and the sick and shut-in in our prayers this week. For those of you that are in worshiping in-house, we have moved our tithing box to inside the sanctuary right by the door. You can um, put your tithes and offering in that tithing box. For those of you that would like to mail your tithes and offering, you can do so by mailing them to P.O. Box 292, Pastor Shan, Mississippi. You can visit our website at www.gmbcpc.org, or you can cash app us at dollar sign GMBCPC 292. Amen. And they, there will be a graveyard cleanup at the Baptist Cemetery on Tolman Avenue on October the 29th at 7 a.m. if anyone is interested in assisting. Amen. And so we started last week by recognizing our clergy because it is Clergy Appreciation Month. And so we have the Browns with us on today, Evangelist and Reverend Brown. We would like you to come forth and just receive a token of appreciation from the church. Amen. You all do have to share. <laughs> Thank you all for all, all that you do. Thank you. You all just came in. Amen. You came in, put your feet on the ground, started running, and just haven't stopped. And we just appreciate you all for all that you do. Amen. want to recognize our guests if we had any visitors that are visiting with us on this morning. Amen. 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 Would you like to give your name? And It's so good to have you join with us, and um, it was so warm and welcoming to meet you. And so we, we, just, we just thank you for joining with us on this morning. Amen. And dear, I do want to recognize my grandmother. She's back in town. And <laughs> yes, it's always a blessing to have you all joining us on this morning. This concludes my announcement. <laughs>
There is. There is. Amen. And, and ask me how I know there's no other way. Because I've tried other ways. And amen. I've been like the, like the song saying, that's just a testimony. Amen. It's my testimony. I've tried. Over and over and over and over again. And, and, and life experience has taught me that there is no other way. Amen. We can make it without God. We just can't make it. We just can't make it. We just can't make it. Amen. So I thank God for you this morning. And I just, I was just looking at the, a page this morning. And I try to keep up with who's watching. Uh, just, just me, just me. And I, and I recognize some faces out there. Uh, thank God for you, I want Will Goodman and Eddie Collier. Um, and I'm thinking that Sybil and Wardell is there, and Deacon Walker, Deacon Bowser, and Angela Stewart, just to mention a few. And I see a couple of visitors out there. Um, brother and brother Shirley, Sister Shirley and Mr. Clarence Hacker. So I'm just letting them know. And if I miss somebody, I just didn't see you. Okay? But let me thank God for all of you who are here this morning. And thank God for who he is to us. And that's especially, I'm especially glad, Reverend Brown. And Reverend Brown celebrated his birthday on yesterday. Amen. Amen. Him and, him and Deborah Hall. And I won't tell you how old they are. I won't do it. I won't do it. But that song is good setting. If you really look at the scripture that we're talking about this morning, you see that song kind of touch bases what we're talking about, if you watch it. I want everybody to think that, and, and you notice, everybody's not excited about this gospel. All right. Everybody don't want to hear this. It doesn't make sense to everybody. Okay? And, and, and our writer in the text, if you go with me, let's go back to 1 Corinthians. Brother White read it. I want us to go back there this morning. And in my writing, I did only record verses, uh, let me look at my text. I've only re recorded verses 23 through 24, okay, of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I want you to know some things before I get into this text. They had some real severe problems in that charge at, 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 at Corinth, that Paul had gotten word that they were having some problems there. And one of the main problems of the charge was the problem of division. The charge at Corinth were divided. We already learned in scripture that a house divided against itself cannot prosper. And this charge was divided and, and, and they wanted to pick who they wanted to follow in the charge. Some wanted to follow Paul, some Apollos, and some Peter. Some didn't want to follow any of them. My concern is that we don't have that problem in the charge today. Even, even back to the church anniversary, we talked about keeping the church on the rock. Okay, and I, I, I don't know if you notice, I've been kind of focusing on that because my, 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 my desire is that we don't have a bunch of different messages. But that we have the same message. That if we can't be a, on one accord about the gospel, we're not going to be on one accord about anything. So I, the Lord led me to this text this morning. 
and 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 brother brother Larry, I think I'm gonna go and read like brother brother White did. I don't know if you got it all there. I'm, I hate to mess you up, brother. He, he's so faithful. Amen. You know, he puts it up there. He's so faithful, and I and listen. He is so faithful. And, and I thank God for his faithfulness. Now, I know he don't like me talking about it. He probably like Miss Bowser. I don't be talking about how faithful I am. But uh, you got to recognize favorite, faithfulness. Amen. God said, give honor to whom? Can I get a witness? So I thank God for his faithfulness. But let's look at that text. Go, let's go on and start at verse 18. Because when Brother White read it, I said, wow, it, it's really saying a lot. Now, I've got it. I, I've got it. I want to go, if you don't mind, I'd like to read it from the NIV. Or, no, let's say New King James Version. Which one you got up there, Larry? New King James Version. I want to work with Larry. You understand what I'm saying? Got to work with Larry because he tried to work with me. Look at what it says because it's saying a lot here. Okay? It says, for the message of the cross, listen at this, is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. <laughs> That's enough to shout about right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made the foolish, the, the foolish, the wisdom of of, of this world for since in the wisdom of God the world through wisdom did not know God oh Lord have mercy you smart folks <laughs> it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe for Jews request signs and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block, to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of, the, of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to talk about three attitudes toward the, the cross. Three attitudes towards the cross. Okay? And what I wanted you to know now, if you are a believer, don't go to patting yourself on the back. Because it's not because of who you are that you become a believer. We're all here by the grace of Almighty God. You can't even put other folks down because they're not where you are. Amen, because you're not saved by your own, amen, religious attitude. We're all saved by God's grace. Amen, I know if y'all understand what grace is. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Unmerited means you didn't earn this thing. God just decided he was going to bless you to enjoy this. Amen. So we are here this morning to give God glory for opening our blinded eyes. Amen. And to show us, amen, I don't care what university you went to. Amen. It didn't give you enough education to save you. 
three attitudes, three attitudes toward the cross. First, I said, I noticed that Paul opens verse 17, talking about the cross, introducing this long section on the power of the gospel versus the weakness of man's wisdom. Wisdom is the key word in this section. You'll find it eight times. The key idea Paul is expressing is that we should not mix man's wisdom with God's message. Can I say that one more time? We cannot mix God's, man's wisdom with God's message. I had to catch that for myself. Because sometime when the Holy Ghost comes, he makes me seem like I'm so smart. Help me, Holy Ghost. He makes me look intelligent. But I found out, Michelle, that I can come with the same message under my own power. And it makes me look so ignorant. So it helps me to understand that my wisdom is not in Harry Toussaint, but it's in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Choir, you sing better, Annette, when you sing under the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even your praise and your worship sounds so much better when you, when you worship God through the power of of the Holy Spirit. So our, our preaching is not based on our wisdom. I know you've been to school, probably got a master's degree, but that don't make you a good preacher. Amen, it's in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen, we can't get besides ourselves thinking we're all this and we're all that because we're all equal in the sight of Almighty God. Can I get a witness? Amen. The key idea Paul expresses is that we should not mix man's wisdom with God's message. The entire section on wisdom from chapter 1 verse 17 to chapter 2 verse 16 it's a number of Christ contrast between God, the revealed word of God and the wisdom of man. God's wisdom is revealed primarily in the cross of Jesus Christ. Now I want us to pause for a moment. It's not on Baptist. It's not on Methodist. It's not on Presbyterians. It's not on Catholic. It's on the cross of Jesus Christ. It's the power of our preaching deacons. Is on the fact that Jesus Christ went upon Calvary's mountain and died on a cross for our sins. Paul points out that, the, that there are three different attitudes. Now I'm gonna pause for a moment and let you know that time has changed things. There are more than three different attitudes, but there are only three in this text because I'm thinking LeBron James has an attitude. Donald Trump has an attitude. Amen. And even some folks in your family might have an attitude. Can I get a witness? But I can only talk about three because Paul only brings out three in this text. First, some stumble at the cross. Amen. This was the attitude 
of the Jews. They emphasized on miraculous signs. And to them, the cross was a sign of weakness because the Jews were looking for power and great glory. They stumbled at what they thought was the weakness of the cross. Amen. How could anybody, amen, put faith in an unemployed carpenter from Nazareth who died on a sinful death on a common, amen, cross of a criminal? Can I get a witness? They didn't see Jesus like we saw him. They saw him as an unemployed carpenter dying on a sinful cross. They didn't see a savior. They didn't see a rock in a weary land. They didn't see a shelter in a time of storm. And just like they were there, there are people nowadays who don't see Jesus like I see him. It's just a fact. Just like, amen, rather than testify. Amen. But the gospel, y'all, amen, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. Rather than a testimony of weakness, the cross is a tremendous in instrument of power. The weakness of God in the cross is stronger than man. Secondly, some laugh at the cross. Some laughing at y'all now sitting up in here. I think you're wasting your time. They think what we're doing is a lot of foolishness. They think we can be doing some better things. I'm talking about they. That's why y'all don't go come, come talking about what they say. You're going to get yourself in trouble talking about what Can I get a witness? Amen. They, uh, this was the attitude of the, Creek, the Greeks. Uh, to them, the cross was foolishness. Greeks emphasize on wisdom. And some still study the profound writings of Greece, Greek philosophers. But they saw no wisdom in the cross. They looked at the cross from a human point of view. But if, if, if they would have seen a man, it from God's point of view, they would have discerned the wisdom and the great salvation that God provides. Now I can't put them down because sometimes we try to lean on earthly wisdom. Amen. And sometimes Satan feed our earthly wisdom. And we feel all caught up in ourselves. But I want y'all to shout for a minute because God has delivered you from you. God's shown you ain't nothing to you. I don't care where you come from. Amen. You still need God in your life. Amen. Thank God this morning that we found out that without God, we can do nothing. I want to shout for a moment because I found out without God I am nothing. I, I, amen. I can praise him this morning because he's let me know that without him I'd fail. It doesn't matter what I try. Without God I'd be a failure. Amen. But with the power of God I can conquer anything. Come on up in here. Give God glory because by his grace, I know that I can move mountains. Amen. With God's grace, I can take stumbling blocks out of my way. 
For if God is for you, if God is for you, if God is for you, who can be against you? Thank God this morning. Thank God this morning. Thank God this morning. Glory to God this morning. Feel like praising him this morning. God is good this morning. Thank God for his grace this morning. Yeah. So then we see that some stumble at the cross. And some laugh at the cross. But then thirdly, believers experience the power and the wisdom of the cross. Yeah. We discover the power and the wisdom of the cross. And we discover it through the foolishness of preaching. <laughs> Amen. We discover the power of God through the foolishness of preaching. Now let me say y'all something. Just because somebody call you foolish, that doesn't mean you have to act foolish. Yeah. 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 Amen. I've been called a dog, but I don't know how to bark. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Amen, amen. Those who have been called, and I want y'all to get this because if you don't get it, I've wasted my time. You didn't just decide to become a Christian. You didn't just decide to come in here and sit down and listen to the word of God. God called you. And you don't have to be a pastor to be called. You need to enjoy the blessedness of your calling. And then you need to operate in your calling. And it's, it should be an honor to you to know that God thought enough of you out of all the people in the world. It doesn't matter if you're an usher, a called usher. Amen. You ought to give God some glory for thinking enough of them to call them into the usher ministry. Those who have been called by God's grace and have responded by faith realize that Christ is God's power and God's wisdom not that Christ eh, not the Christ of the manger not the Christ of the temple not the Christ of the marketplace not the Christ walking on water not the Christ who fed the 5,000. Talking about the Christ of Calvary's cross. Amen. It is the death of Christ that God revealed the foolishness of man. Amen, y'all. I'm going to preach it. Amen. It doesn't matter who want to hear it. I'm still going to preach it. It doesn't matter if it's a full house. Amen. Jesus preached the gospel. And the, one of his message, amen, to, <laughs> was the one man. Amen. He came. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And he said, we... But he came there all by himself. And he said to Jesus, he said, We know that thou art a teacher come from God because no man can do the works that thou doest except God be with him. <laughs> what did he say that for? <laughs> Jesus went to preaching on him. <laughs> can I get a witness? <laughs> I don't know if you notice it. Every time Jesus got an opportunity, he went to preaching on folks. Yeah, 
he fed the 5,000. <laughs> Amen. But then he went and hid himself <laughs> because he wanted to, him not to get caught up in the bread, but get caught up in his preaching. <laughs> Amen. Because they needed to know that he was the bread <laughs> of heaven. <laughs> Can I get a witness? So y'all, come on up in here. Amen. It doesn't matter what you experience in your life. Always use it as an opportunity to let somebody know. <laughs> Amen. To let somebody know who Jesus is. It doesn't even matter if they don't know who I am. I want them to know whose I am. <laughs> I want them to know that I know Jesus in the pardon of my sins. Amen. Every chance you get, when you go down to Walmart, if you don't say nothing but tell the cash register, the cashier, yeah, the Lord is good. If you don't do nothing but tell somebody, yeah, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. If you tell somebody, he's my shelter in a time of storm he's my bridge over troubled water he's my friend when i'm all by myself but when you get to telling them that not only tell them that but tell them that that same jesus went to carry and died upon the cross they thought they had him because he stayed on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour and they buried him. They buried him in a tomb and they took a rock, y'all, and they put him inside a rock and took a rock and put it around the rock that the rock was on the inside of. But early that Sunday morning, Jesus got up out of the grave. Oh, 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 that. All, all power, all power, all power, all power. Preach it. Preach it. Doesn't matter what your position is. Preach it. What's that song? What's, what's that song? What's that song? What's that song? Who lead that song? I'll tell it. Is that you? I'll tell it wherever the Lord bless me to go. Tell it. You can't tell something you don't know. What's your attitude? What is your attitude toward the cross? And if it's Christ and Him crucified, Praise God for that because he's called you. Don't sit there and be a cheerleader in the church. Cheering other folks on when the Lord used them. Just like the Lord can use brown, he can lose you, use you. Now you may not act a fool like me, okay? But that's all right. Be your own kind of fool. Well, I'd rather be a fool for Jesus than to walk in the wisdom of man. Y'all understand me? Hey, God bless you this morning. And I thank God for it. Now I know that there are some that don't understand the joy that we have. I don't have a problem with that because there once was a time when I didn't understand. But I praise God for it today, for thinking enough of me to open his door and let me in. So because we're interested, and I'm gonna let Evangelist Brown come on and, and give you that invitation because she does such a wonderful job. How many of you really love the Lord? You know, the Lord, is the, the Lord is the only one. Hallelujah. He is the only one that can keep you from falling. He's the only one. You know, a lot of times we look 
for a man to do it. We look for a, a mother to do it. We look for a father to do it. We look for our job to do it. But God is the only one, hallelujah, that can keep us from falling. If you need God to keep you every day of your life, this is your opportunity to come to this altar. You know why I don't cuss folk out like I used to? Right. Sister Walker, I don't cuss folk out like I used to because God has delivered me. And not only, not only, Sister Bowser, not only did he deliver me, he saved me and he has kept me from falling. Woo! He has kept me from falling. He's kept my walk. He's kept my talk. He's kept my body. And he's kept my mind. Do you need the Lord to keep you? Woo! He's a keeper. He'll keep you from dangers that you don't even know about. He'll keep you from sin and traps that you don't even know about. He's a keeper. He will keep you from going crazy. He'll keep you from losing your mind. He's a keeper. Woo, I said he's a keeper. Woo, he's a keeper. Woo, he's a keeper. Woo, and he can keep you from falling. He can keep you strong. He can keep you standing. Even when people think it's foolish. God will keep you. He'll keep you. If you would like for the Lord to keep you. This is your opportunity to come to this altar. Run to this altar. God, I want to be kept by you. I don't want to be kept by a man. I don't want to be kept by a woman. But I want to be kept by you Lord this is your opportunity and, and maybe if the Lord has already kept you but you want to make sure that you stay in his hands you know a lot of times he'll reach out for us Sonya and we'll, we'll reach back but sometimes he reach out for us and we don't reach back this is your opportunity this is your morning to reach back. Woo, God, I want you to keep me. I want you to keep me from falling. I'm not worried about my neighbor and I'm not worried about my friends. I just want you to keep me, Lord. Keep my mind stayed on you. Keep me, Lord. Woo, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. And I just want you, Lord, to keep me me. Woo! Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Keep my mind. Keep my mind. Keep my mind, God, from going astray. Keep me, Lord. Keep me. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Will there be another Will there be another before we pray? Keep us, Lord. Keep us, Lord. In the midnight hour, keep us. When we're going through pain and hurt and disappointment, keep us. Keep us, Lord Jesus. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for these that want to be kept, God. God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to keep us from falling. God, keep our minds stayed on you, God. God, help us to realize, God, that you're holding us in the palm of your hands. Help us not to look to the left or to the right, God. But help us to continue to look from you from with our strength that our health comes. 
Help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. Help us not to worry about the spectators that are watching, Lord. But help us to focus in on you, God. God, help us to see you in everything we do. Help us to come and consult you in everything that we do, everything that we say, God. Wash our minds and wash our mouths, God, so that we won't be offensive to the brethren, God. Lord, keep us. Keep us in the midnight hour. Keep us when the storms of life are raging, God. And God, as you said in your word, if we draw nigh to you, that you would draw nigh to us. So God, today we're drawing. Father, we're drawing closer to you. Just a closer walk with thee. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for being our Savior. And as Pastor said, give us the power, give us the ability to keep carrying your word, to keep teaching your word, to keep preaching your word, God, even when people don't want to hear it. Let us be a living example of you, God, and what you have done. Let us be an example of your keeping power. Let us have the attitude God, that you would have us to have. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray and we say amen. Amen. You may return to your seats. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We thank Pastor Tucson for that wonderful word on this morning. Praise God three attitudes toward the cross. Amen. At this time. Amen. They don't have any tissue up here on the altar. Amen. Amen. At this <laughs> at this time. At this time. If they don't expect, expect people to be up here weeping, do they? Praise God. At this time, we're going to stand for our benediction. Praise God. God. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the one wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.